Brennan Scott, welcome to An Actor to Spares. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Glad to be here. It's an honor to have you, man. You've been an incredible talent and you've carved out such an interesting and amazing pathway of a career working in so many different genres of television. I mean, you've been in some real staples, Goliath, Grey's, Dead to Me. I mean, and now you got the girls on the bus. It's incredible. And then we just had a little chance to speak before we hit record. And we ended up going to the same studio with the same acting teachers. So this this oh, whole thing and, and same and really the same college as well. You know, so it's such an honor to have you here today. But it's such a different experience. I mean, yes, I, I know some folks who went to my youth and they went to like Adler, they went to Playwrights. It's just, I feel like each track you go on is a completely different experience. So um, I feel connected to you. you know, yeah, after, likewise. After, and after and you're in my stuff. other my other favorite West Coast city in, in the Springs, man. So I'm jealous of that. So I hope it's nice um, out there. It's really, um, it's really nice. I'm sorry. But I'm really, I'm really, it's, it, it's really such a wonderful thing to have you here. And I'm really grateful for your time. But as my audience knows, I like to start at the beginning. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Wow. And how was that so experience? The, yeah, it was it was interesting. I'm very great. It's a place where I think growing up, I always wanted to, I knew I wanted to leave. But uh, the older I've gotten, I'm very grateful for the childhood I had there. Um, Alabama, it's, 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 you know, it's got an interesting dichotomy. It's got a, an interesting um you know, it's got it's good and it's bad. I'd, I'd say most places have that. But um, where I'm from, it's a college town. So it brought in a lot of interesting people. There's the University of Alabama, which is Roll Tide, college yeah, football. Huge which, football, right? A lot of camaraderie around that, which was exciting. You know, you, you, you're you uh, around a lot of folks who believe in this idea of like what it is to be a champion and to work hard at uh, yeah. to, to excel at these sports. And I feel like a lot of that uh, – through osmosis seeped into me and how I kind of just approach my life and my career and things like that. It, you know, and, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but to me that seems very much because I'm from Richmond and and perhaps a little more Tuscaloosa. It, it feels like a city that's like trying to reconcile its past and find its future. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say a bit of that, but, and, and I think amongst like a lot of, uh, these really red states there's like i said there's this interesting dichotomy where you'll find the most what i find like progressive accepting melting pot that you just have to be there to experience and um so i was i grew up in one of those places that you know it's really it's a really uh different pace definitely compared to new york and la but um but it's it's also nice to escape there here and there during the rat race that is new york and la Sometimes, you know, I get my refuel, I get my restorative time there at home. And uh, it's just really like down to earth, low key, cool people. That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, were your parents artists? Like, talk to me how the journey started for you. You know, they're they're in the uh, medical field. So everyone in oh, my family. No. What what kind? Yeah. My dad's a doctor. So, yeah, that, okay, yeah, that's my dad. He's a general nice. practitioner. And uh, my mom manages his office. My sister's a pediatrician there. My brother's a nurse there. Cousins work there. It really is a family business. Wow. And um, and uh, for the longest time, I thought that maybe I would move into that profession because it just, you know, made sense to some degree. But um, I just remember looking through a lot of, like, my, my pop's medical journals and being freaked out by it. And um, I'm sure. I, I was like, I'll, I'll play one on TV one day. But, uh, <laughs> Very fortuitous. <laughs> but you know what's yeah. it's, it's, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're also very, very artistic though. It's just that's not where they chose to, you know, to make their profession. But like my brother is an amazing singer. Everyone in my family is artistic in some way, but that's just not, you know, the path they chose. So I think I got a lot of I'm kind of fulfilling a lot of that for them. And and while you were still down there, were you know were they introducing you to art? What what was your experience like, if at all? You know, in Tuscaloosa with the arts community, were you doing any kind of youth theater or? Not really. I mean, I remember, like my sister did some. Uh, she did a lot of theater, theater Tuscaloosa, and um, I I was amazed watching her do that. But then in our family, like everyone, you know, you'd sing in church. And um, you you got up in front of folks and just we we clowned around, we joked around. We were my brother and I. We had a video camera and we were always making these ridiculous little short films. Where when we figured out how to make people disappear, like when you you, you record them and then you press pause and then they jump out of the frame. Oh and you yeah, press pause again. 
I mean, we made what we thought were like the Christopher Nolan of uh, short films as children, and so um, is this mini, we the, all, the mini DV days or? Oh man, this is this is this started with the big. Oh, because, the yeah, bazookas! Yeah, the bazookas. <laughs> yeah, we got one of those. Old gray, <laughs> one that can yeah. be lift, and then and then it, and then it um, evolved to you know the the mini DVs, and then I was always. I was editing. I was the kid who, um, if we had a an assignment at school, I'd always find a way to make a movie out of it and find a way to get my friends to act and I'd write these scripts and whatnot. And so um, I'd say that was my introduction um, to the arts, but didn't know that. I mean, it was just kind of like, that's just what we did or what yeah. I did. Um, they introduced me to a lot of music, a, a lot of wonderful music. And um, but did but you it wasn't play or just as a listener? Oh yeah, I play piano. I play classical wow. guitar, and um, yeah, it's just we just we just tried a whole bunch of things. And and again, I think it was that mentality of if you're if you love it and you put the practice in, then you'll see gains. And um, kind of just that grit of just hey, just keep keep chipping away at it, and you'll you know eventually uh, you'll you'll see a lot of gains from it. So um, we did. I did martial arts. I played Dungeons and Dragons. Wow, you know. <laughs> So uh, that was my uh, me imagining, me exploring characters, me also finding ways to express myself that I didn't feel like I, I could, you know, just through all these characters and um, or through these projects or these movies or writing songs. And then it really wasn't until um, uh, junior year of high school that I decided to do a drama class, and um, and then. I was I was hooked to junior year of high school and then senior year I was still thinking about going into either medicine or physics or something because I really love science I really yeah. love space so you actually stuff. did love it it wasn't this like forced pressure like family does this I got to adhere to the norm it, it you actually did you were interested in it in science not medicine but okay in, in okay science I mean, like sometimes I still like when I read this stuff that's going on with SpaceX and stuff I'm I'm like man. I kind of have these dreams of, you know, going back to school and becoming a rocket scientist or something. But <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll, I'll put that out there for if anyone's looking for someone to play around I mean, again. I think anyone wants someone other than Elon right now. At least I can say that myself. <laughs> so, you know, maybe, maybe yeah, we'll get you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, that'd, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So then when, you know, you earlier touched upon Roll Tide and obviously I think, you know, anyone listening out there would know that NYU is kind of this alternative school for those who wouldn't go there i think they would say so where did where did the impetus when you were applying for colleges like how did you start to curate you know where you were going to apply and how did nyu even come on your radar yeah it was interesting i really i got accepted into some like uh i think i forgot but I, it was like it, my dad recently the other day was like oh yeah you remember when you got accepted into engineering school or something i was like i completely forgot that um but um i applied for i said i was going to apply for one college for the arts and if I got in then I would do it and I wasn't even thinking about it but my drama teacher uh Caroline Reddick uh still so appreciative of she saw me yeah and she said still hey have teaching? you ever she's still teaching uh -huh. amazing and, uh, shout out Carol and she, <laughs> okay, shout out to yeah, her um yeah. and and she uh she said have you ever thought about doing this professionally and I was like I had never thought about that and she said you could actually go to school and get a degree in in drama and theater and um so i thought okay that would satisfy i needed to go to college and yeah. then i could also pursue this and um i said i would apply to nyu and i was like if i if i get into nyu new york of all places which everyone was saying oh my god it's so scary it's so hard to live there and what are you going to do going from tuscaloosa to new york i said if i got in there then i would pursue acting and um and yeah, and then I got in and I said, wow. okay, well, I guess we're doing this. And you, when you auditioned, was that the first time you went to New York? I didn't even audition in New York. I auditioned no in Atlanta. Way. The first time I went into to New York was visiting, was after I got accepted. And I think there was this like uh, thing to visit the campus to uh, a couple of, maybe a month or a couple of weeks before I actually moved to New York. So that was my yeah. first time ever to New York. That's amazing. And, and talk to me then about when you get that acceptance letter, you know, because I imagined, you know, they, it, in so many ways, it's amazing, but then you have to have perhaps a, 
a difficult conversation with your parents, you know, because you said if you were going to get in, you would go. Was that, was that, and uh, as much as you're comfortable talking with, was that, oh, yeah. A, yeah. I mean, I can talk yeah. about whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, what's interesting before I, I think it was before I applied, I actually spoke to my folks about it and I was, I was very, very nervous um, because the whole time no one knew, I mean, everyone knew I would sing and I would do these plays, but I don't think anyone thought that, imagine that I would actually decide to go to school and, and, you know, and get a degree in this and become an actor. And uh, so I was just really, really nervous. And I remember when I talked to my dad about it, he said, he was just like, boy, do whatever you want. And I just was, it just this, this, the anticipation was so much scarier than the actual, you know, there was so much relief after he just was like, yeah, you, you know, you do what you want. And so that was, I'm so grateful for them for just you know wow. giving me that. Shout out, there. Mr. Scott. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a yeah. badass man! That's amazing. Then and 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 so obviously you visited there when you first did. Like, did you did you like New York? Because you know I, I know so many people feel so many different ways about it. Yeah, I, you know it was it's it's interesting. I'm trying to remember that. I remember it being overwhelming because uh, we had. Uh, a, a doctor friend of my father's who used to live there and happened to be there at the time. So he picked us up and was driving us to the city. And it was just, it was loud, um, sensory overload. But I also remember this feeling of looking at on Broadway when we were there eventually and seeing that the streets actually kind of sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I, and, and I don't know what that memory does, but that just was like, oh, okay, there's something magical about this place. Um, I, yeah, I was, I was intimidated, but I was always one of those folks who, uh, I knew I just needed to jump in the deep end and yeah. get over whatever that was. Um, because again, you just chip away at it bit by bit, eventually you're going to end up on the other side. So, uh, but also I think there was a part of me that knew that I wanted to get out of the South, get out of Alabama. And so it just, I knew this culture shock was going to be exciting and good so i'd say it was it was it was a mix of both but i'd say mostly it was it was excitement amongst the fear because i i just had a sense of this is gonna just be something just really special and i i met i i loved i loved being at myu amongst the city and the students where you didn't know who was who yeah i love people watching i love uh walking and kind of being in, being inspired by everything around you and that's what i miss about new york in general every, i feel like every day is an adventure you just walk out your house you don't know what's going to happen but it's a hero's journey and then yeah. when you make it to the oh, end of the day it's like whoa wow it's like that was a whole full three-act movie yeah you could go get a cup of coffee and then suddenly find yourself coming home at four in the morning you know it's yeah. The only yeah it's it's that's what i love about it and and you know, do you obviously you said you had the bug and you were doing these films and while you were there, do you feel like it fully it grabbed you like did this acting thing is what I really want to be doing with my life? Because I don't know about you. By the time I got done with primary studio, like half my class had already stopped acting. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious what it was like for you, you know, yourself, not not about your class, but for you personally. For personally, yeah, yeah. I was this. This is interesting because it makes me curious about you know your journey. But yeah. um because like for me, I, uh, I, I love the idea of craft and I love being connected to the history of a craft. And when in Alabama, I mean, I appreciated, you know, the theater training that I got there, but when I got to NYU and got to Strasburg specifically, and you're looking at all these pictures of all these actors that I grew up watching, yeah. But then they started talking about like the Moscow Art Theater and the group theater and just the legacy and the history. I just felt a part of something really exciting. Um, I felt a part of, I just felt the history of it and the importance of it. And I mean, like, I always say that like, probably if I would have moved to LA when I was that age, I would have joined like a cult or something. So like... <laughs> You know, like I know what you mean, man. I might have yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a young, gullible, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. impressionable, uh, like just just kid. And yeah. so, luckily, Strasburg and acting that in the, that community was my cult, and I went. I I just loved it. I ate it up. I read everything. I saw everything. 
Um, you know, and then you get to that point where you're like, I'm an artist. Like, it's just like, you just, you feel like you want to dress in all black. I remember like I, in, in high school, it was about Tommy Hilfiger. It was about just like, you know, presenting yourself a certain way. And then you get to theater school and it's like, everyone's just wearing black and like just sweats. Yeah, brooding you know? all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it, man. I loved it. So, so then with, yeah. with that instilled in you, then, you know, I'm I'm very curious because for, for me, I only say this very short, briefly, that I, I didn't really get focused seriously on it till later. For you, were you out there grinding for agents while still in undergrad? No, no. I really adhered to the rules that they had. I don't know how it was. Uh, it was the same. Say, it was this. It was yeah. funny because I can say it because she won't care, but. Rachel Brosnahan is a good friend of mine. I, th I know you guys oh, yeah, did a Rachel, project yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. I love so Rachel. she was, yeah. it was me and Rachel were the first people to meet at Strasburg, and wow. we just became yep. really close and still are. But you know, I mean, I, I don't think she'll mind me saying this. She was auditioning, you know, while things oh, were going on, and it was funny because NYU was mad, but now they're you know posting her every time. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was such a rule follower. And um, so I did not. But some of my friends who did, yeah, they're doing doing really. really well. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I think it was my first day. It's so funny, too, because I don't know. I don't remember the teacher, but I remember this. There was the first day of Strasburg. The lady said, I can't think of her name, but she said, uh, OK, everyone, raise your hand if you know someone in the industry, you have connections, family, X, Y and Z. Some people raise their hands. And she said, you shouldn't be here. You should be talking to them or wherever they are and connecting with them. And then she says, for everyone else, let's teach you how to act. And I was just like, what is happening right now? But yeah. then, you know, I think it was just her main point was, you know, if, if you got an in, the take business it. side, yeah, of it, the yeah. business side of it, and that's that's one thing that I I I I hear they maybe rectified a bit, but we did not get I don't I don't think business training, and not saying that 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 that's the right way or anything like that, but I think that was her way of teaching a bit about the business. Like you're going to need to network, you're going to need to make connections, you're going to need to get out there and be in that world sometimes, you know, and then but everyone else like. We're going to teach you a different. We're going to start with the acting part first, and then maybe that'll help you connect to the business side of it. So um, I definitely um, fed into that, and I did not start looking for agents until I guess we did the you know the NYU showcase at the the end of when and, we graduated. And how did that go for you? It it went well. I mean, I got yeah. I got my first manager from that, and I got my first uh, commercial agent from that. And that really, the commercial, I, I did a whole bunch of commercials right out of college, which really helped. Back back when also, they were mostly all table. SAG then, right? Oh, yeah. Yo, oh, so they were, they were yeah. helpful then, you know, because for my audience listening now, you know, commercials, it's like it, it, a SAG one is impossible to get almost. Oh, my goodness. That's very unfortunate because, I mean, I've met so many commercial actors who were talking about, oh, yeah, I got my house off of this commercial and that commercial. And I did a Coca-Cola commercial that was an international commercial. And that thing, I mean, I still waited tables, but that helped me out so much, just that one commercial. And um, so, yeah, I really the the showcase got me my agent who then helped me to start booking commercials. And then how long was that until Law and Order? Because that was your first thing, right? Yeah, I think it was either Law and Order or I think it was it was I'm pretty sure it was Law and Order. Uh, I, maybe a year or two years. I don't remember, but you know, I think I don't know if it's still like this, but the staple of when you've kind of entered the, oh yeah the, is, is law and order you do an episode of law and order absolutely so okay okay it was my first um, thing too <laughs> every, it's everyone yeah. Yeah. and then the other day yeah. someone yeah. told yeah. me yeah. what it is someone told me what it is for la but i can't remember i don't know if it is grays or something but um I like see new that. york is law and order la was like a grays or maybe a shonda show but um yeah i, I think it was a couple of years and i was but i was doing a lot of theater a lot of theater with friends in the meantime at at, at like independent uh mm -hmm. production companies in black boxes yeah. or and but i started i started a theater company with some friends outside of once we graduated and we had that company around for about two or three years that's beautiful and so so we you know i think community is just 
so important. I mean, uh, and and I had a group of friends who we could just continue to be theater geeks together, throw stuff against the wall, try stuff. And I think it just made it easier or um, for me, it made it easier when the auditions would come to say, oh, OK, this is one of those things. Well, um, I'm kind of already in the rhythm. I'm not. I don't have to dust off the cobwebs. Yeah. I'm already okay falling on my face in front of people. So I'm going to take risks. And uh, so we had that company, we did some really. Um, All original work or. or uh, most, Yeah, I think it yeah. was, no, we first we started, we wanted to be the labyrinth. Uh, oh, of it, course. Yeah. Like the lab. And so we start. we only did Gyrgis plays. And we did Stephen Alley Gyrgis and um, Eric Bogosian. We did Suburbia. Oh, I love Bogosian. Gear just came to a production of ours and then Bogosian came to our um, suburbia production we did. And then actually one of the cast members from that show ended up when they did it, the revival at second stage, they found her from our production. And um, yeah, we were just, we were like, we, we were mostly Strasburg kids who were just trying to kind of keep that energy alive for ourselves. That's so wonderful and terrific to hear. And I'm so glad that you had that. And as then, you know, you booked Law and Order and you had these commercials under your belt, then, you know, I don't, I don't know about for you, but so much of my, you know, not even, I would say Tish Kitch, but just NYU, so many people, once they were done, they were like, I got to get out of New York. After a yeah. while being here. To go to and, LA? Or yeah, to go, to, to, to go yeah. to LA. Yeah. And you mentioned you, you, you were grinding, waiting tables while things were going on. After getting, you know, obviously maybe not the first major credit law and order, but maybe one or two others. Did you finally start to maybe think about LA? Yeah, I, I thought about it, but not see, I, I, I thought I was like, I'm going to die on the stage. I'm a theater guy. I'm not going to, I actually really, the idea of doing film and television. I don't know. I mean, I think secretly I wanted to do it, but I didn't want to admit it because I felt uh, I don't know. I was a bit of a theater snob. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! And, but also, I, I feel like theater was different then. Theater was, it was. I'm mean, going to use in quotations easier for folks who didn't have, let's say, names right. to get into these productions to star in them. And I feel that when I was uh, in the arts, kind of. I feel like there was this transition to where then everyone was saying, you have to have a name to be on Broadway. Yeah. And, and, you gotta and, be and, Joe and Hall and Denzel to do Othello. And I was up for yeah. that. I was, no I way! was like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's how I got my first legit agent is because I almost was in Othello. And then the casting director said, Hey, you know, you don't have an agent. And I said, no. And so she was like, let me introduce you to so-and-so at innovative. And, that's how I ended up at Innovative. But, uh, That's awesome. But I, I really felt then that you could, and maybe it was just I got, I got exhausted of the grind, but I really felt that I could carve a way to end up on Broadway without needing to have TV credits, film credits, and things like that. And then at a certain point, I just, I remember thinking, maybe if I had spent some time in LA, it'll make it easier to get back to new york and get and so the name maybe so to speak yeah and then and and, and i had these these dreams of and, and and i still do would love to do broadway but i think now that's i, I want to see you up there eh? you know we got to do something together i'm gonna get a you know true west so we'll play brothers somehow oh my goodness <laughs> right yeah let's yeah. switch it each time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that but then I love that oh. talk to me about so you you did pull the trigger on la eventually right I, I did pull the trigger on L.A. I mean, it's the, you know, the stereotypical story of I was dating someone, they moved to L.A. And then that also helped me think of, oh, well, maybe I'll yeah, go follow so out to L.A. Yeah. 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 And so I would I would spend time going back and forth. And then um, I was living in Harlem. The whole area was getting gentrified. And one one day I just said uh, <laughs> and, and I was living in these in these condos that the landlord said he was about to uh, increase the rent by like three times. Oh my and, God. And I think that's illegal now. It, I don't think. Yeah, we, it totally yeah. is illegal, you know? And it probably was illegal then, but we were kids and didn't think to say, Hey, that's illegal. You can't do that. So when he said that, um, I just, what am I doing? Um, because I could pay 
similar or less in LA have more space. Um, the weather's better during the winters. And when I was, I had a manager who was in LA and he started, he said, just try pilot season out here. Just like, I want you to come out here for a pilot season three months, just commit to it. And so it just worked out. And I, I did one pilot season in LA and tested like six times. That's My first amazing. pilot season, this is back when they had would, that. That kinda, still kind of existed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and when I, when I, I didn't book anything, uh, a pilot, but I got really close. And that's when I said, mm, maybe LA because there just was, it seemed there were more auditions out there. Also, um, you could get in front of the same casting director more times in a shorter amount of uh, time, as opposed to New York, I would see, let's say this one casting director once or twice a year while in LA in three months, I saw this casting director four or five times and wow. they kind of got to know your work. So I, I just, it, it made sense. And I just you know, pulled the trigger on that. And then you started racking up the guest stars. The guest stars. Yeah. 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 And, um, and still doing commercials. And then, um, and then I was, I was teaching martial arts. Also, oh, so you went all the way, you went, you got black belt in martial arts. Oh yeah. Oh dude, dude. I was training for the Olympics at one point. I was. What? Uh, I mean, I, I, was, I know, I know I was, we're here to talk about your that. acting career, but we got to yeah. touch base on this. Yeah. I was on NYU's team. I don't know if you know, we had a team. No, I didn't NYU. know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had a Taekwondo or Jido Kwan team and Olympic style uh, Taekwondo. Wow. And, uh, and so I was on the team and God, I, I'm, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, uh, I can't think of his name and I apologize if he hears this and gets upset by it. But so um, Bill Balzac has someone who we went to school with who was the coach, the head coach of the Taekwondo team at NYU. Yeah. Right. And so, um, so I got on the team and he's like, Oh, you're an actor. I, I was an actor too and stuff. And so I felt like we bonded over that. And, um, and uh, then we were, we were talking about Olympic training and getting ready for the tryouts and things like that and um i just was busy doing plays and whatnot so i couldn't make all the the um the the practices oh, yeah yeah and, and at one point he said I, I i'm gonna need you to choose between the team or acting and i was like i'm here to act like i'm in yeah. college we're paying all this money to get a degree in in, in drama like I, i'm here to act and so then i got kicked off the team and uh and so what? that was yeah, yeah yeah and i thought i was like i thought i thought you would understand but uh, hey you know what he he knew what he needed for the team yeah and um maybe and well, look, probably, we're, you're we're doing great amazing. now you know i mean you're crushing it i'm proud of you man so you know <laughs> all, all all right things and 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 that's wonderful and thank yeah. you for sharing that story so then while you were doing all that in la was there finally the first it could have been perhaps reoccurring or series regular that finally changed things for you where you could just act at a certain point. Yeah. You know, I will, I'd say Grays was that thing, but I had told myself Grays was my first recurring, but I told myself because I had Spalding. That done, was your first Sp Dr. Yeah. Ryan Spalding. Yeah. 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 And, and, um, but I had, because when the commercial money was great, like, I, I quit one of my, um, I, I was working at Hard Rock Cafe and then working at this place and this barbecue joint. And when the commercial money started really being good, I said, you know what? I can, I can just live off that. And um, then when that started drying up, it was really stressful. So I told myself that as long as I could hold another job, I would hold another job. So actually when I was doing grades, even though that, the it, you know i did like a season and a half or whatnot and the, the pay was great i wasn't complaining because i had like a little small apartment that i was you know paying nothing for but i still said you know what on the weekends i'm going to um continue to teach martial arts on days off i'm gonna still because i wanted to make sure i just didn't end up in that place to where um, expectation builds resentment you know yeah yeah and also yeah. where i ended up broke again so uh but i'd say it wasn't so grace did well but it wasn't it wasn't probably for another like five or six years that I had said, you know what? Um, I'm not going to hold down another job. All I can do is act. Yeah. Even though I think I was, because I was like, why not, why not, you know, save some of this money. I like, if it's residuals, put it in a savings and, but continue to, you know, um, hold down other things to make whatever supplemental income I could, because I just was so afraid of <laughs> running out of money again. 
And, and while Spalding was reoccurring then, were you able, because you weren't in the series regular contract at that point, to audition for other shows and do guest mm-hmm. stars? So how was that yeah. working then? Because you were able to balance a lot of work at one time. That must have been really stimulating for you to go from theater company, Dream of Broadway, to I'm auditioning and I'm working and I got other jobs. That must have been just going back to yeah. Tuscaloosa. I, you must have been so giddy, you know, so to speak. Yeah, it- yeah, it was yeah, it was it was great. I mean, um, I think when I was doing Grays, even though I was auditioning for other things, um, I don't know if I was booking anything else. So I mostly when I was doing Grays, the acting stuff was Grays. I had a theater company in LA that I was doing some work with. And then um I still do commercials and I still teach martial arts. So that was kind of the the work for me. Um it wasn't until later that I think I started balancing different shows at once and that was exciting, but also stressful because um, I, it's all champagne problems, but you know, you're on one show and they want you for this and then they want you for this for something else, but then they want you to shave or they want you to cut your hair. And then it's like, well, how's this going to match with this character? And it's someone who like, I like to really craft a look and a character and a thing, you know, yeah. it's just, it's sometimes it's like, wait, you so, but that character's whole demeanor is about their like their beard. It's important for them to have that. So then you'd end up on another show and they're like, well, we want you to shave it. And then I have to go back to the other character and be like, okay, well now I guess the character shaved, but it just didn't feel the same. Um, so some th- that's me complaining about little things, but um, you know, it, it's just bouncing back and forth. And especially um, cause I was doing 13 reasons why at one point when I was doing dead to me, when I was also doing, this is us and wow. they, and these are all recurring. So sometimes I have to fly up to San Francisco, shoot a couple of days, then back and shoot and then go back and um, all great things. But you get a little exhausted and you get a little jet lag, even though it's the same time. So, but you get, you get a little, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you're, you're it, it's a lot of work to balance, you know, I can yeah. only imagine. And yeah. I, I'm so curious for you, you know, and for the actors listening, because I feel like one of the toughest things that actors do is is procedurals. And you did it so exceptionally well, you know, particularly a medical procedural for you being on that show for so long. And for the actors listening, you know, auditioning for those shows can be really tricky, especially when there's a lot of, yeah. you know, med- medical jargon and, and different vernacular, you know, for the actors listening out there. How did you find living in that world and, and being able to, to bring truth to it when you have so much expositional medical information to sometimes, you know, carry through in the dialogue. Yeah, that that's interesting. I mean, I think for the audition for that, that's around the time when, um, because I think sometimes the occupation can get in the way of just being a human being or the mm-hmm. character, the idea of an occupation. And I think sometimes you it should infuse the work you know if you're definitely let's say um the occupation you feel is so removed from yourself that you need to kind of um bridge the gap in some way but i I remember for uh for grace i said you know what i know this world like i know this world my my dad does it my family does it i grew up here so maybe i i just remember telling myself maybe i shouldn't rely on the idea of a doctor so much because i i know what that is and the idea of a doctor is just a human being you know what i mean it's like it's just me it's and so i remember for that one i just was like i want to bring more personality to this whatever medical jargon is whatever and and i think for an audition it can be a bit different because Sometimes in an audition, I think we get caught up in the idea of how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And the thing is, or like you're like, you read a scene and it says, do X, Y, and Z, and this needs to happen in it. And sometimes I think that they get bored of seeing everyone do what they think there's, it, it's written, it's supposed to be done. And sometimes you're just looking for someone to come in and do something fresh. So I, that was one of the first time I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot of medical jargon and stuff, but I'm just going to bring my own personality to this. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to stumble. I'm just going to not be so, because I think originally I would approach it like a doctor needs to be put together and precise, Yeah, you know? And, and this one, I was just like, he's, he's a young, excited student and he loves this shit. And, you know, he's got a bit of a, um, you know, he's got a fun personality and I just want to focus more on that. So, um, 
so that I think helped get the role. But then, and then as I started, you know, actually shooting some of the scenes with a lot of medical jargon, I mean, I, I tried to infuse that, but then also sometimes you just got to sit and just memorize. Yeah. It's almost like a play you, bringing it back because it's just so word specific, you know? Yeah. And you, and, and the, like, I don't think, I feel like it's easier now to find, let's say the pronunciation or, you know, information. I mean, Google was around, but, uh, you know, I don't think it was as easy, but I just remember having to do a lot of research and, and just practice because also I had a bit of a Southern accent. So I was like, okay, are we doing, are we pronouncing it this way? What is the way to pronounce it? And then also the frustration between, you know, sometimes you get on these shows and they say it has to be pronounced this way. And because if you're a doctor, you know, it's pronounced that way. And I'm like, well, if you're a doctor in the South, you might pronounce it a little bit differently than you do, you know, and, or, and, you know, it's that, it's that thing of also where you get on a show and, you know, some of it is written for television, but then, you know, I'd go and ask my dad, and be like, dad, X, Y, and Z. And he'd be like, no one would do that. And you guys just, that's amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And- how did your your parents must have thought that was awesome to bring the whole thing full circle to the family, you know, being on this amazing oh. show, doing the doctor thing. And, you know, you got your father out there back home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think he really liked that. That's he, awesome. he took, I remember he took me to the hospital. He was like going around. He's like, my son's going to be on Grey's Anatomy, everyone, you know, just like, <laughs> <laughs> they That's probably awesome. took care of Lance, but I was really, really loved how excited he was. Oh man. I bet they're, they're thinking about you now. And then, you know, you you spoke about doing so many amazing productions and, you know, obviously because we're here to talk about the girls on the bus to not try their 13 Reasons Why, Dead to Me, Goliath, This Is Us. These are such incredible shows and I'm so proud of you for doing such excellent work That's on them. Time. But they're all such different tonalities. And you already said that, you know, you had to balance a lot of balancing between each one. I'm curious for you as an actor and as yourself, you know, how were you able to be in so many different worlds simultaneously as an actor and make sure the tonality, you know, as you, I'm not saying they were all concurrent, but that's, that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a hell of a job as an actor. And that's certainly something they don't touch on in acting school, you know, being Mm. in different, different genres, doing different things at the same time. I mean, that, that I'm, that's amazing. I mean, just stimulus wise, I can only, I'm so curious to hear what you have to say. Yeah, it's, I mean, specifically when I was doing like Dead to Me, 13 Reasons Why, and um, and This Is Us. Yeah, I, some of it is just being really aware of the show um, and kind of knowing where you're trying to shoot your target. And it might not, you know, like you're an archer and you're shooting the arrow, arrow and you're hoping it gets in the target range and just trusting that, you you understand the genre or the tone and whatnot and some of it is just i i think especially i learned on dead to me because i really feel and maybe some people will refute this that the first season when because i think dead to me was a tone that folks hadn't seen in a long time i and agree. maybe had seen respond in that way i I, I remember people referencing that. Sorry to interrupt you, but it was just yeah, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, people yeah. were hitting me up about that, and it was something. It it just it it really locked into something that people hadn't felt in a long time. Yeah, I think so. And just this idea of grief, but humor through grief, and um, this I think genre of a dark comedy or dramedy. Really, there were other shows. I think similar, but I hadn't seen anything like this in the writing like this before. And for myself, I hadn't encountered this to some degree. It, it kind of reminded me, I mean, like how <laughs> Neil LeBute could be so dark, but like, it's also humorous. And so um, it was just interesting. And I really think the first season we were, we were playing to kind of see what worked. And I remember we would do, we do a take where it's like, okay, this is the comedic take. And then it was like, okay, now let's do a bit more grounded take. And let's do, let's like, fine. What, what, what if we mix the two and see where we end up? And um, what I loved about it is I felt like they got everything in the can and they got, 
they it gave the editors a lot to play with as they kind of t- started to explore the tone and 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 um and so that's one thing I've always taken with um with with me is um sometimes you just gotta like switch it up try different things and be it might not be right let's say but um I, I think the tendency or before was to kind of feel like I know what world we're in yeah. and like you know now I'm like okay I think I know what world we're in I, I trust that and then I'm like let's just shake it up maybe who knows but then sometimes those beautiful mistakes or accidents or ridiculous things that you throw in um especially in the world of I think dramedy where it toes the line really well it can go so many different places and probably who knows every genre um for myself, I try to like remind myself that, Hey, we might be in this tone right now, but like next, next take, or who knows what looks like, just see what, 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 what comes up. Um, because, cause you, ne- you, you never know, as long as you, I think, you know, know the character, know the circumstances and stay truthful, then your truth can be kind of what, whatever, you know, um, as long as it's, you know, honest to you. So um, that's how I'd say I balanced all that. I'd just go on set and be like, okay, well, um, 13 reasons why it's like, it's so freaking dark that, that you know, supposedly, but yeah. like, hey, but um, let's, let's kind of like see what happens if we do this or let's see if this works. And um, um, maybe today the character is a bit more this. Um, I don't know do, if that makes sense. Use, it totally that, does. Do you use a coach yeah. ever? Oh, yes, I do. I do. I am a big fan of that now because I have a coach, Margie Haber. Okay. Who, um, and, and I actually, every now and then, I'll, I'll actually meet up with Bill. And no, just, nice. Oh, God, yeah. He's the best. Yeah. Bill Balzac is awesome. Yeah. Um, and because I love collaboration, I love being challenged. I love when um, you get to, um, when it's not the like when it's an initial creative space and you just get to like go back and forth with someone because sometimes the childlike think, play nature of things almost to... yeah yeah it and it with someone else because i think you can kind of have ideas in your head and i think it's important to get clear on what you want to say what you feel what your truth is and then um what i love about even if it's an audition with, you know, just talking to a friend and say, Hey, what do you, what do you get from this? Like what, or, you know, or an acting coach, like what, what do you see? There's going to be something that they say that I haven't even thought about, or they might, I might say something that they challenge that forces me to have to kind of like either defend it. And I say defend in a way of like, no, 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 I, I feel confident in this because of X, Y, and Z, or it might be the thing that unlocks something like, Oh, wow. I haven't even, I never even thought about that aspect of you know exploring that side yeah yeah and so that's why i love i love collaboration i feel like in theater you do it a lot and in a film or tv world it's so compressed and sometimes you don't even get the full range of it you might not have the first challenge to your idea until you're right in front of the camera and you got to be able to adjust but also it's great when you've been talking to people about this character. So it's almost like a pitch, you know, like yeah. pitching them on a story weeks in advance to where you just, you know, you feel so grounded in, in your knowledge of this. Beautifully put. And, and thank you for sharing. And and sorry for those who's out there who love those shows. I just want to make sure that we have time to get the girls on the bus. I'd love to have oh, you yeah. come back someday and we can keep oh, digging more on, on your work. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a real honor. But talk to me about the girls on the bus. How did this come your way? Yeah, it was really awesome. I mean, I I got the audition and um Did you know I, about I, the I, book? No, I did not. I did uh, not. Me at either. all. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't your question. Yeah. It wasn't no, it yeah. wasn't on my, yeah. my, my yeah. list of book yeah. stories. Yeah. But uh uh yeah, I just I remember being in Puerto Rico. I was shooting um <laughs> I was shooting uh, Fantasy Island. And it's always great when you get an audition uh, when you're on another show because well, number one I'm like, I'm like, oh fuck, I don't want to shoot. Can I curse? I'm sorry. Yeah, of course you can, man. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was like, I was like, shit, I don't want to do this audition right now because I'm shooting and I want to focus on that. But then I also think that there's something awesome about sending in an audition when you're in a hotel room and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm on this other thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm already, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I love 
I've always been into politics. Um, I've always been into dramedies, like that kind of, again, toes the line between com comedy and drama. Um, uh, I loved the West Wing. So I love things yeah. like theater, you know, when, when there's like a, a pace to it. The, the, a, the Sorkin level voice. style of totally. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I just, I, I when I first read the, the, the sides for the character and his name was Loafers, I just, you know, I was like, this is, this sounds like fun. So I said, I definitely want to audition for it. And, um, and then I went through a few auditions and it, it was a bit of a, a long process, but then eventually got the part. And I mean, honestly, still pinching myself that I got to be a part of this awesome, uh, relevant story with yeah. such wonderful folks. I know Carla, she's a friend and she's done the show. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. Carla's uh, yes, she's awesome. The, the I, I, she's been awesome. Yeah, she's, I mean, Always. her career yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, but so is yours. So you know, and we're, okay. we're here to talk about you. And was it you know? I mean, talk to me. Not even that I want to get in the identity politics, but it's like you know, it's such a a, a female intensive show. And I say that in a totally a, a wonderful sense. But you know, being a male on that show, and then how you have to you know, going back to acting, coaching, and and exploring the sides of the character. Was that something that you worked on with the showrunners to, you know, maybe perhaps, you know, because it's, they spend so much time with these particular four women, then mm -hmm. to have your character, you know, was there, and as the season develops and, you know, I mean, just talk to me about maybe basing it upon something, anyone real perhaps, or if not, like how you created this character, because you, it's really interesting, and, and I really love your work in it. Oh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, um, it uh, a lot of conversations with with the showrunner and um, the creators because I think, especially for my character and um, Griffin Dunn's character, who are very important to the lead character. I mean, everyone kind of it's about the four women, but it's told through mostly Sadie uh, Melissa Benoist um, character. Uh, it was important that we support her and her journey in some way. So I felt that the character was very important to um, to her journey throughout the, the show, uh, a big catalyst for her change. And then also I remember they early on, they were kind of like loafers and, and Sadie's, they, we got to be on board with Malcolm and Sadie from the get go or like, things aren't going to work. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's some pressure. But, yeah. um, but, but it was, you know, it, it was fine. The characters are so well written. Uh, Melissa is so awesome to work with and so playful. Um, uh, I, and I, I love, I mean, and when I think of dead to me, and I think of this, it's really awesome. I love being in support of these female led female staffed, like written shows, I this I just love what uh, what's happening in that world and what they're creating and um and so I I just love being in service to that. So uh, I just was on board from the get go, and then again through through a lot of conversations about how I'm in, of service the character, um, and then also talking to uh, I, I did a few interviews with I did an interview with a previous press secretary. And I spent some time in in, oh. in DC. Yeah, I love I love kind of the research I just want part. Yeah, yeah, textures because um, anything that just moves me, anything that just I, that sparks my curiosity. Just I, it was my first time to ever go to DC. I had never been to DC, and just taking an Acela to DC and walking around the the Capitol and talking to people, just. I don't even know if I can articulate what it did, but it just filled me with so much just texture about this world and about this character that um, sometimes I just need to be reminded that this person, this character is like actually a real person. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, it's not just research. It's not just what's in my head, but you just meet someone and you just get, uh, a, a, like a synesthetic response from them that just is like, oh, wow, okay, you are a geek about politics in DC and you just like grew up in this and you just, there's just an energy that I can't, uh, you know, I can't put into words what it is, but now I through osmosis, 
I'm like, I, I believe in this a bit more. I believe it just took it to a new level. So, um, so I did a lot of that. And I think that I try to, whenever I get a, 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 a job to, to find those textures, whatever that may be, however I can find that. Well, you're doing an amazing job and, and thank you for sharing that story. And I'm, I'm very curious, you know, what's, what's next for you? What's next? Well, I guess we're waiting to see. Hopefully it'd be awesome to get a season two girls on the bus. Um, but other than that, knocking on wood here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I do, you know, I want to do some more. I want to get back and do some like big theater, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like there's and, uh, I, NYC East coast theater. And wherever. It's just yeah. like, you know, that, that part of, I've, I've kind of gotten in touch back in touch with that part of me. That's like, yo, I, you've always wanted to play Hamlet. Or you always wanted to do, um, like, uh, I did Death of a Salesman when I was younger, but I was too young. And yeah. I was like, I would love to revisit. Biff or Happy? I, I did Biff. Oh. And, and I was like, I'd love to revisit that. So um, I, I'd love to get that on the horizon. But also, in the meantime, I do music. I, I have, a like, a band that hey, I... Can you shout it with. out? Do you guys play shows? I, well, we're I'm, we're getting the band back together. Do I? So know. for for the listeners out there, what's the band called? Okay, so one is called Verbal and Icarus. So there's Verbal like, and Icarus. I, yeah, I go by right. Icarus, and then actor Malcolm Barrett. He plays Verbal. He went to NYU, um, and so he raps. I sing. We we have a cool experimental soul uh, hip hop band thing going on. Is that so available check on Verbal. Spotify? Yep, Verbal okay. and Icarus. And then also I do solo music under Icarus V. So just How do you spell the V V part? Just V. Icarus and then V. Got it. Amazing. Yeah, so you check all that out. That's awesome. And 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 talk to me, you know, for the actors listening out there, and I ask every actor this that does the question, it's a really weird time for the business, especially coming out of the strike. And, you know, certainly I you know, as someone who has worked and then has slowed up, you know, you came up at a time when television was still wonderful and grays and those kind of things still could exist on linear television. But now we live in the streaming world. And I know this might be a hard question, but for the actors listening out there, any words of wisdom you might have for those, you know, fighting the fight, getting those auditions right now? Yeah. Um, hmm. I think you have to have grace with yourself and just continue to be kind to yourself uh, is one thing. But I think community is so important. If if you don't, the business part always frustrates me. But when I get connected back, me personally, to, to craft and why I love this shit, that helps me get through anything. So um, I encourage anyone to if you don't have a community of theater kids or film kids or whatever kids you can get together with and just create with and try stuff out throw shit against the wall fall on your face in front of each other just to find that community because i think that community is gonna just um number one just keep that flame burning inside of you but then also help get through these tough times because you I think we, we need each other to kind of like remind ourselves, oh yeah, this is what it's like <laughs> to be with humans, you know, yeah. and not AI. Like for us to Thank do you. this, you know, it's it is like a um it's a campfire feel. And yeah. I don't think we can forget like the storytelling around a campfire is always gonna be magical and beautiful and therapeutic. That's so good. I'm stealing that campfire and I'll quote you, don't worry. But okay. and Scott Man, I have so much love for you, and it was such an honor, and thank you for sharing your story and your experiences, and I would really love to have you back, and I really mean this. I I really want to see you on the stage. I don't care where it is, but when it goes down, I want to be there, and and one day, I sincerely, I do hope we get a chance to work together, and thank you for coming on and sharing your story, and it means so much. Oh, thanks for this is awesome. My yeah. pleasure. And yeah, I can't wait to be back. Yeah. Well, we're going to see you on the stage soon and good luck with the band getting back together. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Appreciate that. And-